Well, hey everyone, this is Prince from DC Programmer. Welcome back to another exciting video. And in this video, we are going to extend the same thing that we did in the last video that was to create a multi step registration form. But we are going to use provider so that you can distribute that every step into its own widget and each widget can have their own local state. So, first of all, I've added a provider which is going to be providing the data in all our widgets. Provider is just a syntactical sugar over inherited widget. So remember how I told you that if you're having multiple widgets, okay, then you may have to pass data from one widget to another widget. We usually do that via constructor. If you want to make the process better, you may use inherited widget, but inherited widget will ask you to write a lot of boilerplate code. What provider does is simplifies that so that we don't have to write all that boilerplate code. We just write the couple of stuff that we really need our own personal stuff that we need and you're good to go. So let's work with this. As you can see, I have saved this. I have already installed providers. So it's up and running. Now, first thing that we need is a model. So I'm going to create a model in our model directory. I'm going to create a user model dot dot. So it's very simple. We create a simple class. Okay. I'm going to call this uh, user model, but this class extends something and that is going to be a change notifier. So as the term itself suggests, it, this class can notify when there is a change. To notify for a change, we have to call notify listeners, but let's talk about that later. Now this class can have all the properties that you need. So for example, you can have a string, let's say name, you can have a string, let's say email, and you can have all the methods that you need right here. So for example, if you have to run an API call and do everything, so not here, you can also have it that a controller, or you can just have a method here, let's say a create user. And this method will just do everything and then will notify that okay user has been created thus first this will simplify your code a lot now this uh, has to only deal with the ui and whatever little logic that may have to be added there for example this stepper and stuff like that although you can add that there too but let's not do that much and you can also simplify this code here uh, so all your logic logic can reside here we'll talk about patterns later on right now let's keep it simple so we have name email everything that you need what i really uh, i'm interested here is an integer which is going to be your active index remember the terminology or the variable name that we used in the last video so we have active index then we have total index all right save it both of them uh, will have a value so by default our active index is zero and our total indexes are two let's save this and we are good to go Let's go to pages and now we are having another page here, which is going to be multi step provider dot dot. Okay. This is going to be simple. We have a material visit here, a stateful visit, which is going to be multi page provider. It uh, returns a scaffold as always. And this has an app bar and the app bar basically has a title that says uh, using provider. So let's text that says using provider we simply have to add a const here we'll do that all right let's save this let's go back to main dot dot and now instead of calling a multi-page basic what i want to call here is multi-step provider come on let me see what the name is okay it's multi-page provider not multi-step provider so we have multi-page provider let's save this now let's run the application and then we will make the changes there all right so everything is up and running as you can see it says using provider which means we are running this one now, first thing we need is a provider. So I'm not going to go in detail about the provider architecture. The process is simple. Once you wrap a visit with a provider and you don't use navigator, first of all, let's remember when you wrap this visit with a provider and you use a navigator, the provider is not going to work for that. You have to wrap your entire uh, material app with that particular provider. Right now, we don't care about that. We only need the registra registration page to have that provider. You can also wrap this with multi provider so that the provider access has access everywhere, but we're not going to do that too. I'm just going to have a provider here. So my scaffold is actually going to be wrapped by, um, all right, let's say a visit. This visit is going to be a change notifier provider. Okay. So every time there is a change, uh, this is a basically a change notifier provider. So whatever value we wrap with this, this provider and all its uh, children visit will have access to that particular model and every time the value is changed all the widgets only those widgets which are actually depending on that value will be rebuilt process is very optimized if you ever look you know deep into it what it does and you know when compared to set state it's really very optimized but anyway right now we have a simple change notifier provider and it's of it's going to have a user model so you need a create method okay which just uses the context and as you can see i have to simply 
um, create the user model here. And now you can use this particular user model everywhere. Although it's not going to have access because we just said that it's going to provide. Now, wherever you need the access, you have to use a consumer. Before we do that, let's just set up a couple of things. For example, let's go to multipage basic dot dot. And now we have a basic detail which returns this particular form, right? Let's grab everything from here and uh, let's copy this. Let's go to provider and now we can create a different visit. It's also going to be stateful. Let's say for now and it's going to be, let's say basic details. We save this and instead of returning a container, I return the form. Okay, great. Now, obviously we need these things. So we have to grab them. So these two, I'll talk about them later. Let's first grab this everything that we need. And yep, okay, it's there. Now you see the one good thing here is that uh, when you are passing the data, when you're differentiating the data, you can only put those data here, which you really need access to in different places. Like for example, this form key, I don't really have to put this in this model because it only has to work with this particular visit. So when my provider remove this from the visit tree, everything will be disposed by default. So what I'm going to do is that, so for example, here, I don't need this form key there. So I'm just going to copy this and I'm going to paste this in this particular visit only. But the active index, the total index, we are going to need this in different widgets. So, you know, like in basic details, we are going to need that in education details. We are going to need that. And we're also going to need that in this multi-page provider state when we have to switch the body according to the index. And that's why you have them here. Now, what you need to do here is that we need a body that can render this, right? So first, uh, this is our scaffold. What we do is that we put a body here and this body is going to be a consumer. A consumer, as the term itself suggests, will consume the value that is provided by the provider. So consumers should have a parent provider. So, but this consumer is going to uh, you know, work with this particular parent provider. And I'm going to typecast this with user model so that this builder, which has uh, three things, it has context, it has the model, and it has the child. So once you typecast this with this user model, now this model will have all the properties easily. And then we return something. Okay. So let's save this. Now to return, what we're going to return. Instead of doing everything at other place, we are going to simply do here only. We have a switch case. The value that we have to switch for is model dot active index. Okay. So if the case is zero, we are going to return something and that is going to be, let's say basic details. Okay. The same goes for default to, and now that we are returning something, it's not going to have any issue. It's asking me to make them, them constant and that's great. Now here too, this active index, this active index, the total index, they all should come from this particular model only, right? So that's completely up to you. If you want, you can wrap this with a consumer, wrap this with a consumer because these they don't need access to, but normally even they are going to need access to uh, for name and email. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to wrap this entire form uh, with a consumer. And one good way to do that is that wrap this with a builder, then go all the way here. And this is your builder, right? So just copy this basically copy this up until here, go all the way down here and then just replace it. Okay. Done. Now the active index can come from model dot active index. This too can come from model dot active index and this total index will obviously come from model dot total index. Save this and here instead of switching the active index. Now this is where things get interesting. You don't have to use set state to actually change the value. What means is that you don't even need a stateful visit here, although we are actually needing it because of the form. But if if, the, if you wanted, this could be a stateless visit and the form should then obviously depend on the user model to notify the changes. Right now we're not doing that, but this can actually be a stateless visit. And every time there's a change in this value, this active index value, all these will be rebuilt according to that. What I mean to say is that when I click on next, I have to change this active index in such a way that although I'm clicking next from this particular visit, all right, this visit too should be rebuilt and should render, you know, the next visit according to the case. That's, and this is something that although right now you may think that, hey, provider is, uh, you know, it's just making a lot of mess. The previous option was better, like the basic one, everything was in the same page and stuff like that. But three things, remember, A, if you have, um, you know, too many fields here, if you're making a lot of state changes here, then you know, separating this concern will be better. B, it's it's looking good. I mean, in terms of code, you can easily separate the logic and the UI. And C, now you can easily change values in an entire visit tree 
And if you were doing this without using the provider, the process would have been much tough. Anyway, what we need to do here is that we just need a method here. I'm going to say change index. Okay, this will take an index and I'm saying that the active index should be the value which is being provided by this index and then we call a notify listener. So once you call this particular method, this is going to change this and notify the listener. So whatever the value is changed here, that will be changed and here it will build everything accordingly. So let's first go all the way down here. Let's go to education details. And here too, you have a list view, pretty simple. I'm just going to copy this and let's come back to multi-step provider. Let's have another state less visit here. And this is going to be, let's say education details. And I'm just going to return this particular list view. Obviously we need uh, these things here. So first let's say return, um, wrap this with a builder and then just replace this. Okay. Sorry. Actually to replace, let's go all the way up here and um, copy this entire line of code. Let's go here and then replace this. Next thing again, this is going to come from model dot active index and this too is going to come from model dot active index. This is going to come from model dot total index. And here, when you want to go to next, you have to simply call model dot change index. Okay. And the change index is going to be one. So, you know, it's zero. Now it should be one. Let's save this. And now let's try and do you click on next. Okay. First of all, you do understand that we are in the provider, uh, you know, using provider page. So click on next, obviously, because of the form, we are getting the error. We have to fix this. We have prints. We have prints at gmail.com and we have this password. Click on next and now you're in step two of two. The problem is that although it says a step two of two, you are still looking at the same widget and that's my bad because here we have to actually say that when the case is one, return education details, save, refresh now. And let's do this once again. Click on next, nothing. We have prints, prints at gmail.com, some random password, click on next. Now we are at step two, click on register. It will, come to, it will continue the process. Now I know you can use different type of state management techniques here. But remember in this video, I was not trying to show you state management. I was trying to show you providing values in a visit tree, something that provider does great. I mean, even if you're using block, you may need a block provider, which can provide your block value in your entire visit tree, like it's doing here. So I think that's pretty much it from my side in this video. In the next video, we will discuss more about Flutter, coding or well, whatnot.